Hello everyone, NBZ here, bringing you a standard PO showdown, PO showdown, no you silly sausage, showdown battle, uh, a post narrated showdown battle, I think I just said everything wrong in that introduction, but it doesn't matter, I've got to stick with it, so let's go, what are we doing here, hi, I'm NBZ and I didn't manage to get a video sorted for today because I was streaming and then the Xbox thing happened, so haven't been able to put something together, but Showdown is very easy to do for me, so I'm just going to show you one of those instead. I got sent this team by the Thunder Dragons 12, I think was his name. I'll put his link in the description, his team. Uh, it's a gravity team, which is cool. I like the, th the idea of gravity, whether it really works or not, I'm not truly convinced. But I guess if you build a, a good team around it, then you can make it work. You can make anything work, really, if you uh, put the time and effort into it. But uh, we're going to start off this game. Let's go into it. I'm leading on this side. I'm leading. I am, yes. I'm the leader on this side of the field because that's just how the replay decided to do it. I don't know how they decide these things. But my opponent is Stark number one. I am, of course, Oedipus. Let's get into the battle. So I'm going to lead off with Starmie and get a phenomenal start to the game because he has a Hipparon lead. And I decide, well, he's probably going to switch out. So I'm going to set up Gravity. Because with Gravity in Force, I can hit Hydro Pump, Thunder, and Blizzard without missing. Which is pretty fucking fantastic, I might say so. However, he does stay in, goes for the Earthquake, brings me down quite a bit. And with Sandstorm and Life Orb, I'm certainly going to be chipped away quite uh, a huge amount. However, a critical hit Hydro Pump... Uh, doesn't really care for Hippowdon as it sweeps it off the field. Pretty fantastic. Not sure if that mattered because Hippowdon can be um, like specially defensive. So if it was a special defensive Hippowdon, could have potentially made a difference. But if it wasn't, then it made no matter. No, he's going to go into Garchomp. Kills me with the Dragon Claw, which tells me, ladies and gentlemen, one thing. He is Scarf Garchomp. He goes for the uh, Earthquake, sorry, not the Dragon Claw. And I get a free switch into Ferrothorn to set up my Stealth Rocks. Perfect opportunity to do so. Garchomp isn't going to stay in all day and try and hammer on the Earthquake button. It would be a silly endeavour and would result in me getting up all my hazards practically for free. So it goes into Reuniclus, shows me Focus Blast, which um, probably means he's just your standard just Calm Mind Reuniclus with Psychic Focus Blast or Psyshock maybe and uh, Recover Calm Mind. So I get off a layer of spikes, which is certainly going to be very useful. He has four things on the ground going to be taken. Actually, three things, because Reuniclus doesn't count. It doesn't have any um, any of that problem, because of Magic Guard. But, I decide that now is a good opportunity to go into Sableye, because ladies and gentlemen, Psychic and Focus Blast do nothing to Sableye. So I can bring this thing in, taunt it if it wants to recover slash calm mind, and then foul play it after that has been done, and well, we'll just continue on from there, I guess. Shut it down. He can't calm mind after the taunt, so I do block his move there, but it's not like it really matters, because he can't touch Sableye anyway. Not sure why he stayed in, but, um, well, I guess we'll never know. He's going to switch out, however, now to his Landorus to directly threaten me. I actually go for the foul play on the switch, which doesn't do as much as I hoped, because he is clearly not a physical Landorus. If he was a physically based Landorus, it would have done a lot more damage, because that thing has power in the physical department. So he goes for the Earth Power, showing that he is, in fact, a specially based Landorus. I smack him with another foul play. Doesn't quite take him out. We're both living on the edge with those smidgens, 5 and 7% respectively, but um, it's certainly not going to be uh, uh, working out too great for me because I can't kill him because he's faster. The only thing I can do is get off a of priority gravity, which kind of sets up Heracross to lock itself in on a move of its choice like Stone Edge or Megahorn. And I decide I'm going to go for Stone Edge. Uh, Megahorn, sorry. Not Stone Edge. The reason I go for Megahorn as opposed to Close Combat is because... Even though he resists Megahorn with both Keldeo and Scizor, if I go for close combat, he goes into Reuniclus for free and gets off a free Calm Mind as I switch. And the reason this is bad is because I don't have Sableye anymore. So if Reuniclus gets up enough Calm Minds, then it could be a bad day. Although, you know, I do still have the Scarf Heracross with Megahorn. It's just a case of making sure gravity is up, so I eliminate it properly. But that's my train of thought, why I locked myself into Megahorn as opposed to close combat. So there you go. Uh, I do get the Moxie boost from it, which is nice, meaning even if the Keldeo comes in, it's not going to appreciate a Megahorn at all. Uh, and I'm not going to be missing it, because gravity is uh, four turns 
things left in it. So he does go into the Caldeo, takes some nice damage from the hazards, and Megahorn does 50%, which I am certainly pleased with. And I think he surfed me earlier. I think I did uh, find that out. So I wasn't really expecting to die from the hit, and I don't. I live with a nice 25% remaining. And I'm going to kill uh, Caldeo if he stays in. And he thinks that Caldeo is too much of an asset to just go to waste. So he's going to switch into Scizor to take the oncoming Megahorn. And still, like, Scizor does not appreciate this either. 47% Heracross going ham with this Scarf Megahorn right now. Certainly doing well. But I do not want to stay in to take a Bullet Punch or to just, yeah, that's the thing. Bullet Punch will kill me. So I'm going to go to Ferrothorn predicting that. He actually pulls a double switch on this turn. Um, probably uh, thinking that I'm going to go to um, Ferrothorn and works out nicely in his favor because Keldeo can easily take me out with a secret sword. Unfortunately for him, however, Stealth Rocks and Spikes and Sandstorm all bring him down right to 1%. And even though I die to the secret sword, he's going down to his own Sandstorm anyway. So I'm not complaining. Keldeo is out the way. Don't have to worry about that thing anymore. So yeah, we're, we're, we're okay. It's 3-3. Three to three. And we've got to think about finishing off the game here. I think that Heracross is the key to, to victory because Megahorn is going to slam the Rhinoclus and finish it off. And that's what I'm going for. So he goes into Scizor as I go into Landorus. We get a nice switch in uh, on my end here because obviously I get the Intimidate off and Bullet Punch is going to be doing hardly anything. He dies to his own Life Orb. And I actually end up going for the U-turn here instead of the Gravity. Had I gone for Gravity, things would have been a little bit easier because I could have then gone into Heracross and locked myself into Megahorn earlier. However, at this point, Garchomp is still Scarfed. Well, it's it's not it's not like he's going to lose its Scarf, is it? Um, Garchomp is still around, is what I'm trying to say. So I couldn't actually go into Heracross at that point because he would outspeed me and I would die. But I, I don't know what I'm I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore. But let's just continue. Garchomp has the choice, of course, of going for Earthquake predicting my Heatran or going for a Dragon move uh, predicting me stay. And he goes for Dragon Claw, kind of middle ground, so he doesn't get locked into Earthquake. But it's not really going to work out for him because I do live it because I am bulky Landorus and Landorus just takes hits like a champion. Bring it out to 9%, which means he will die from switching. Allow me to go to Heatran, resist the Dragon Claw, and force him out into his Reuniclus. Meaning, ladies and gentlemen, that if he does switch, when he comes back in, he's dead. If he doesn't switch, he's locked into Dragon Claw and he's dead from an Earth Power that I'm about to fire his way. He decides he's going to go straight into Reuniclus, not lose his Garchomp just yet to the Hazards, and... Um, thinks that Reuniclus is going to pull out of the bag. However, ladies and gentlemen, there is a very high possibility that I'm going to win. I mean, it's like basically 95% at this point. What I need to happen, however, is for my Heatran to die. Heatran is not going to die very quickly, though, because this guy is going to insist on calm minding and recovering to all hell until it freezes over. He does not want to give in at this point. He's like, no, I am I'm, 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 ain't having this. Maybe if I'm at 100%, maybe I'll live a Megahorn. And I'm actually kind of afraid of that. If he is at 100% HP, maybe he can live a Megahorn from Heracross. So a little bit iffy on that because he is Calm Minds. So he may have defensive investment. He keeps going for Calm Minds. Decides he's staying in. He's not killing Heatran yet. And my plan is to let Heatran die. Go to Landorus to set up gravity. And then, once Landorus is dead from the Reuniclus, look how close it was to dying. 3% there, uh, but he's recovering. And then go into Heracross, go for the Mega Horn and finish it off. However, you can see this is taking a long time. So we're going to skip turns here. We're going to go to turn 32, I think. Uh, we'll just we'll just stay here. It's turn, yeah, turn 32. Okay, so on this turn, after me lava pluing for a long time and him recovering and car mining, he's back to 100%, which is not good. I don't want that to be the situation. But I, I I may not be able to control it, you know? We don't know about that just yet. I may run out of PP. But seeing as I brought you to this place in, in time, you know that something's going to happen. And he crits me. Crits me with a psychic. But the good thing is he's down to 84, which gives me a little bit of a window of opportunity here. I'm going to go to Landorus, set up the gravity, and then go into Heracross and hopefully hit the Mega Horn, as long as he's not like recovering back up, but he does recover. However, because he recovered, I can now go for an Earthquake and do a huge amount of damage, putting me in a nicer position. I think he's going to recover again, though, so he is brought back all the way to 94%, but ladies and gentlemen, this is the thing. Can Heracross kill a Rhinoclus from 94% with a Mega Horn? I'm not sure, because I don't know how well it's going to take it. Gravity is up. I'm not going to miss. I'm going to go for the Mega Horn, and I kill him. I do take the Runiclus out 
it dies and of course Garchomp is going to die to the hazards upon switching so a very narrow 1-0 victory there ladies and gentlemen but an interesting game and a game that showed that gravity can be very useful if used appropriately so I hope you enjoyed this one if you did feel free to leave a like on the video that would certainly put me in a happy full mood I will dance around my room and sing songs or something I swear it I'm not lying I don't lie about these things um, and yeah I will see you guys very soon with another video thank you for watching and goodbye